Hey everybody, this is Justin Branham for MasterFiddle.com and in this lesson video we're going to work on a great classic fiddle tune called Durang Swarm Pipe. This is in the key of D, a super standard tune that's played in a lot of different styles. I think initially this was a two part tune, but we're going to actually play four different parts plus a variation on the A part. And this version is uh, what I'm kind of calling Forester style because it's based on the fiddling of the great Howdy Forrester. And Howdy Forrester was a very influential fiddle player, uh, probably starting in the 50s, maybe early 50s, or actually probably the 40s, I think he played on the radio. Uh, he played with Roy Acuff for most of his life, was on the Grand Ole Opry, and put out a bunch of very influential fiddle albums. So he's one of several uh, what I would call fiddle tune players. He could also play in a band too. Um, fiddle players tend to kind of gravitate towards one or the other, or some are good at both, and, and he could certainly do both. Back up a singer too and take improvised breaks, but he was really known as a great fiddle tune player. And, and to me, those albums that were so influential on everybody that, that all fiddle players uh, from the time those albums came out, even to now, reference those albums, those are good things to learn tunes from or to base your versions of tunes off of. So I've sort of taken that as inspiration and kind of distilled the basic version of the melody. Uh, and of course, as I said, this is a really classic tune that you hear all the time in fiddle jam sessions and fiddle contests, and it would be a great square dance tune as well. So let's take a listen to Durang's Hornpipe. <laughs> Okay, so our first part goes a little something like this. And then we would repeat that. Um, our first phrase that we're going to do sounds like this. First half of the phrase, we'll say. And we're going to start on the G string. We've got a four note slur on a down bow. First finger on the G string, that's an A note. To second finger, to third finger. And I like to go to open D here. Uh, you could also go to your fourth finger, but that doesn't sound as strong, so that's why I jump over to the open D string there. So that's all down. Then we're gonna slur two on an up bow. So that was on the D string, that's second finger F sharp to third finger G on an up bow. Open A on a down bow. Three note slur on an up bow here. This is second finger on the D string and F sharp to open D, back to F sharp. So that was. Okay, our next half of that first phrase is. We go into the downbeat of the next measure there. So this is over the G chord now. We're in the key of D, but the first. Uh, half of that phrase was over a D chord, one measure of D, and now we're on one measure of G. And you can kind of see how the notes fit that. This B note is the third of a G chord. So I think it's always good to kind of think about what chords you're playing over when you learn these melodies. Um, so we've got a three note slur on a down bow. This is first finger on A, a B note. Second finger C sharp. Third finger D. Another three note slur here on an up bow. 
So that was open A, first finger on A, a B note, back to open A, all up. And then another three note slur on a down bow, second finger on the D string, F sharp, first finger E to open D. And that's the first note of the next phrase there. So this half of the phrase was. And we'll put that together with the first half that we did. One, two, go. Okay, so that's our first true phrase of the of the melody and I want to just make note real quick that second measure if you're looking at the sheet music um, I've got three three note slurs in a row and that's a technique that I use quite a bit on hoedowns especially in, in any kind of fiddle tune type thing uh, I really like those three note slurs sometimes and what happens when you do three note slurs over a four beat pattern is that you end up slurring across a downbeat so the very first one that goes to um, beat two there. The end of that slur is on beat two. One and two. And then I change bowings on the and of two. So that first finger B note is on the downbeat there, but I'm playing a slur across that downbeat. And that gives me a real nice, almost kind of a tension because I'm not playing a down bow on the downbeat, I'm playing an up bow. And when that happens, you want to try to kind of feel that downbeat still in your bowing. And I'm, I kind of exaggerated that, but I'm going to accent the middle of that slur and kind of back off of it on the last note so that that downbeat is still represented, but it gives it a different kind of a feel than a straight downbeat. So if I did it all separate notes, that's cool. That's nice and articulate. This is a little smoother. I'll do, I'll do it again. And there on that last three note slur, I accented the very last note of the slur pattern, the three note slur, which was on the downbeat as well. So I'm accenting different parts of the slur and each of those has kind of a different feel. And it sort of almost kind of swings a little bit. It's not really a true swing feel that I'm going for, but having those accents in different places in the bow kind of creates this tension. And that's one of the things that makes or gives, gives the illusion of swing in, in music. And so this is, I don't know if that's where this is coming from. It might be uh, related to Western swing influence and fiddle tune playing, but a lot of players will do this. Uh, I've heard Tommy Jackson do it, especially a lot of the Texas guys like Benny Thomason would do it. Um, but it works for a lot of different fiddle styles to kind of give you this sort of tension with the, with the bowing. So definitely something worth paying attention to. It's gonna happen again as we learn this tune. All right, so let's go on to our next phrase, which sounds like this. I'm going to pick up on the last um, note of that slur. Okay, that's our next half of the phrase. Open D on the down bow, that's the end of that slur. And fourth finger on the a, uh, D string, an A note, that's up. Second finger F sharp down, open D. Back to fourth finger A note. Second finger F sharp, open D. And that was all just back and forth. So we should be on an up bow now for this slur that goes into the next phrase, the next half of the phrase. So that was all up and that was another three note slur. F sharp, second finger on the D string, first finger E, open D. Okay, and then that goes into the next phrase, which is. Okay, so we did. So the next phrase, we'll pick up on that last note of the measure there on the up bow slur, the three note slur. So that was two, one, open on the D string. And then we're gonna do another three note slur on a down bow this time. This is three on G, C sharp, two B, first finger A. And then up bow, third finger, C sharp. First finger on the, e, on the D string, rather an E note. And then third finger on the G string is C sharp. So that was. Put that together for our second phrase. So we'll have. I'll count into it so you can play with me. One, two, three, four. OK, 
Okay, then we're basically going to play the uh, first half of the first phrase again. And actually everything's the same except for the very last note. So we don't go into it with a little triplet. We're just going to start right on that D note on a down bow. And this is all the same. Now right here, instead of going to a three note slur on a down bow and then going, so that was F sharp, E, D. We're going to go up to an open A note. So otherwise it's all the same. And then our ending phrase is. So that's a three note slur on a down bow. First finger on the E string, F sharp. Second finger, G sharp. Third finger, A. So that was all down. Then back to that G sharp on an up bow, second finger, E string, fourth finger, B, back to second finger, G sharp, open E, second finger on the A string, that's a C sharp, and then third finger on the A string, a D note, first finger, B, open A, slur two on an up bow on the D string, F sharp to D. So that's our last phrase. We'll play the whole thing here in just a second. I just want to talk about that last phrase because we've got G sharps in there a bunch and they're kind of in odd places. So, um, you know, why is that that we're using the G sharp when the key of D, which should just have two sharps, uh, F sharp and C sharp, key of A has, has three sharps and we have a G sharp. This isn't in the key of A. So what's happening here? Well, we're kind of using the uh, Lydian mode, which is the fourth mode of a major scale. And all that is is a major scale with a raised um, fourth scale degree. So the fourth scale degree in the key of D is G. We're playing a G sharp instead, which gives us the same key signature as A, but everything's kind of related to or revolving around D. That's our tonal center. And so when we play out of D as if we were in the key of D, but with that raised fourth scale degree, that's called the uh, Lydian mode, which sounds like this. <laughs> A lot of fiddle tunes use that, and I'm not so sure that it didn't come from the second finger or certain other notes that happen to be that scale degree when we're, when we're in a particular key, actually being easier to play. And then it was just kind of a sound that got accepted into old time fiddling. Uh, the version that this is based off of, Howdy Forrester's version, definitely uses that G sharp, and I thought it was kind of a cool sound. It brings some tension in. And it gives us that Lydian sound against D major, which is, which is a neat sound to use and kind of evokes that sort of old timey uh, raised fourth sound. Now, some fiddle players will sort of play in between that raised fourth and the regular uh, fourth of, the, of a major scale and sort of hit the middle. And Howdy was probably, uh, he was playing more in tune than that to my ears. I think that he was playing the G sharp. But a lot of times I'll hear people sort of play in between the cracks there, sort of a quarter tone, and that's really common. And, uh, you know, sometimes that actually does sound better. You have to kind of make that judgment call if you want to do that, but it's really hard to not make that sound out of tune, <laughs> and your ears have to really be used to that sound and what you're going for. So I don't recommend that if you're just getting into fiddling. If you've listened to it a lot and you kind of hear that sound anyway, you could try that, see if it sounds good. Um, you know, with contemporary music, it's usually better to aim for the note because that's kind of what everybody's used to hearing and it won't sound out of tune. So your choice on that. You could also change into G naturals. That phrase would sound like this. Uh, that fits the chord a little bit better, but it loses that tension. And when you play it fast, it doesn't um, rub up against the chord so harshly. So just a, just a little aside. So let's try the whole thing now. One, two, or one, two, three. Let's go to the B part. <laughs> 